Hi, my name is Hank from Nile Systems, and I'm going to show you how to start your L200M. The L200M is Nile's most popular model. It's easy to operate and should give you great results on your first load and on all the rest of your loads using our engineered manual as a guide. On page 114 of the manual, that's the Nile manual that comes with the unit, on page 114 of the manual we begin by turning the power on to your L200M. Your screen's going to look something like this. Space 1, you can see here to the left, is your vent status. Space 2 is your heater status. Space 3 is compressor status. And space 4 is humidifier. A zero indicates on. And a line, or a dash as you see here, indicates off. Both vent and humidification controls are optional. The vents are automatic only if you purchase the power vent kit option, and the humidifier will function only with the purchase of an atomizing spray, also an option. If you don't have either of these options, you don't need to consider spaces 1 or 4. Space 5 is your dry bulb temperature. A dry bulb temperature may be a new term for you, and it's simply the temperature inside the kiln measured with a dry bulb thermometer, or we call it a probe. When you look out your window at a tube of red or silver liquid in the morning to see how cold it is, you're looking at a dry bulb thermometer. Space 6, over here, is the wet bulb temperature. As you know, evaporation causes cooling. A wet bulb thermometer is merely a probe with a wet sock on it. The faster the water evaporates from the sock, the more cooling occurs on the wet bulb probe. A lot of cooling indicates a dry chamber. The difference between the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature is called the depression. The larger the depression, the drier the air will be in your chamber. Moisture probe readings are shown in spaces 7 through 10, and an average of these is shown in space 11. Now, let's set up a real live load. Follow along in your manual if you like. I'm working off page 1-15. It begins by telling you that your kiln is pre-programmed here at Nile. They call it configured in the manual. And this pre-programming or configuration is permanent and will last through power failures. To access the configuration mode, press the select key and the first parameter screen setting uh, will occur, will appear. To see the next parameter, press the select key again, and to change values, hit the up or the down keys. The controller will exit the setup mode after you set the last parameter, or after 10 seconds without any activity on the keyboard. Now the first values that you see here are the wood probes. Here we are, wood probe 1. They appear in order 1 through 4, and you can't set a value here. All you can do is order them on or off, and you'll see that this one is on, and number 2 is on, number 3 is on, and number four is on. That's pretty much the way you want them. To turn them off, go to the select key, press it repeatedly until the appropriate probe shows, and then toggle the up and down keys as we did before until the screen shows a negative. Probe readings will be visible unless you turn them off, but you may not turn them all off. At least one pair must be on while your kiln is operating. You can see the readings here on the screen Note that the four pairs of probes do not show a decimal value, but the fifth one does. It's the average. The decimals are calculated. They don't show, but they do show over here on the average. Your dry bulb temperature shows here, 
and it will show until you come along and hit select. Now we're going to have to run through these to get there, but let's do that. Dry bulb, and you can see that this has been set to 120. You can set your dry bulb from 68 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. However, you should not set your you should not start your compressor with a chamber with a chamber temperature of less than 80 degrees. You may also select your wet bulb temperature. And we'll have to run through these to get there. Dry bulb is 120 and the wet bulb is set here at 68. Our manual tells us that the wet bulb temperature range is from a low of 68 degrees Fahrenheit to whatever the dry bulb is set at. In order to have a dry kiln, the wet bulb must be lower than the dry bulb. The next configuration is a final moisture content. And you can see that the final moisture content has been set for 8%. This can be set anywhere from 0 to 30%. And what it does for you is that it shuts down the process when you achieve your goal. And if your goal is 8%, this kiln will shut down at 8%. And this is the reason why at least one pair of probes must be installed. Now the next thing your controller will ask you for is a wood group. This wood group isn't a Nile wood group. It's a controller wood group. Go to Appendix 3, page 1-26 of your manual and look up Pine can't find it? Well, this controller is a purchased part used worldwide and the supplier tends to identify trees with countries so try American pine and you're going to find it there as a group 3 wood so insert 3 here. Now we're going to talk about other wood groups coming on and it's easy to get confused. Bear in mind that this is the only time you use the supplier's wood group, wood group code and in this case, American Pine is group three. And we insert it in here. Wood group three. The effect of entering the correct value is important as it modifies unit performance. Now we're going to talk about drawing a load. Turn to page 2-2 of your manual. There you'll see four groups. These are groups which Niall selected. We are drawing pine today. The first question you want to answer is, what group is pine in? It says here it's in group 1. The group 1 schedule is on page 2-4. Flip to 2-4 of your manual and, uh, oh boy, this is easy. You'll see that the manual says you can't dry group one wood too fast. You certainly can dry other woods too fast, but not group one. The manual tells us to set the dry bulb at 120 degrees and the wet bulb at 75 degrees and operate in this manner until we reach dryness. And dryness, let's say, is a moisture content of 8%.